No one knows how brave I'm being right now. Hi, hello, how are you? If you're new here, welcome to my channel. It's so nice to meet you. And if you're coming back, we're best friends now, you already know how this goes. I hope you're doing well. And if not, that's totally okay. I 100% get that. And I hope tomorrow's a better day for you. Today, we just have a chill, low stakes video, you know, like just talking about books over coffee with a friend kind of deal. Um, I just wanted to update you guys on the books I've read so far for Shake Up Your Shelves. It's been two months now, and I think I've completed five out of the 16 prompts. Not on purpose, to be honest. I've just been like reading what I want to read, reading what I enjoy reading, um, and then seeing which books fall into each category. So it just worked out that I've read five so far and let's just jump into it. So the first prompt that I completed was reading a banned or challenged book. So this is books that have been either completely banned or up for being banned or challenged in libraries and schools. And this typically happens in the US, but it can happen across the world um, because some people think that censorship is the way to go. And this book has been challenged and it has been banned in multiple parts of the world in the 70s when it was published due to its controversial depictions of female sexuality and sexual deviance. This book is also categorized as erotica, which I have a bone to pick with whomever put that as the category for this book, um, because in my opinion, then On the Road in 1984 are also erotica. So it just doesn't make sense. And that book is Fear of Flying by Erica Jung. So I am really surprised that I haven't heard about this book on like booktube or booksta before and I don't remember seeing anything of Erica Jung although it could just be that I wasn't paying attention but reading this book is the first that I hear of her although I know she's also a poet I believe and this book was recommended to me by one of the lovely people working at Flying Books which is an indie bookstore and publisher in Toronto. And this is the 40th anniversary edition. And like I told the woman working there that, you know, I really like unhinged women. I like books that kind of are out of the box that break a lot of literary boundaries. And she said that this is her favorite book and she highly recommends it. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to drop $20 on this because why not? Basically, this is about a woman, Isadora, but she goes by Isa or Izzy or Isa, I think. I'm just going to go with that. And she's married to a psychiatrist and she's kind of bored of the mundanity of being a wife. This is her second marriage. Things are not exciting for her anymore. And she is determined to find a zipless fuck. And now this is a term that was coined by Erica Jung and it's basically like a no strings attached, don't know your name, we have an encounter and then we never see each other again kind of thing. But this kind of fails for her because she does meet a man and he's a British man. He's a horrifying little man in my opinion. I despised his character but they end up like going on a road trip together and she travels a bit around Europe and then she finds herself alone in Paris I think it was and she decides that like this is not what she wanted she doesn't know if she wants to go back to her marriage because she doesn't think that that's what she wants either and she's just like in her late 20s trying to figure out what she needs from life. It is feminist existentialist literary fiction and I thought it was fantastic. It's not a book that I would typically pick up based on the premise but I didn't find it 
like overly vulgar and when it was it was for the purpose of like the plot or like literary style so I thought it was really well done really interesting and I'm really looking forward to reading more of Erica Jung's work. The next prompt that I completed was to read a book that has been on your TBR for over a year. This is either like on your physical TBR or just like your mental TBR, your Goodreads slash Storygraph TBR, whatever. Um, because we want people to dust up their shelves and read something that they've been meaning to read for a while but still haven't picked up. So this is a book that I found in a free little library I think almost two years ago now and it's a book that I've been meaning to read for a while because everyone and their mother thinks that this book is fantastic and that's A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. So I have previously read an Ozeki book. I read her most recent which was The Book of Form of Emptiness which won the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2022. Personally, I wasn't a fan for many reasons. If you want to hear my thoughts, you can check out my video where I read the Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist. This book, while I enjoyed it and I was looking forward to picking it up and reading it and getting to know the characters, I don't think that it gave me what I signed up for. Just based on how people describe this book and the premise of this book, I thought I was going to learn a lot more about the hundred year old badass feminist nun. But we didn't learn much about her life, like really at all. Maybe a little bit of snippets here and there. I just thought we would learn more about her past and her involvement in different kinds of movements. But really it was just about this young girl's life writing the diary and then the woman's life who was reading the diary. The woman reading the diary finds it like it's like washed up ashore in a Hello Kitty lunchbox and she's reading it like years after it's been written because um, it's after the 2011 tsunami in Japan. So like this woman is like wondering does she ex like does this girl still exist? Is she still alive? Where is she? What is she doing? Especially because this young girl was like deeply, deeply depressed. It's a very interesting story. It's just not what I expected. I really liked it. I thought the writing style was good. It is quite long, but it, it doesn't feel as long as it is, though it did take me a while. I don't know if I'll be picking up another Ozeki book, just because I've read two and I feel like now I'm familiar with her style of storytelling and writing and I don't think it's for me. And I know all the hot girlies love Ozeki, especially this book, but I just don't think it's my vibe and that's okay. The next prompt that I completed was to read a book by a genderqueer author. And we said that to complete this prompt, you can read any book by an author that is not cisgendered. And so I completely forgot that I had this book for a second, um, but it is a book written by a transgender queer woman. And it's called Your Mind is a Terrible Thing by Hayley Piper. This book was recommended to me by the wonderful folks at Little Ghost Books, which is a horror bookstore in Toronto. And basically, they asked me what I like. I said I like psychological horror. I like stuff that's like, it breaks the bounds of reality. And anything that's written by a woman, a non-binary author, or a queer author because I don't like reading things by men. <laughs> and so this was recommended to me. It's about, it's about a character called Alto and they finally get a chance to go out with the woman they've been crushing on that's also on their spaceship that also happens to be their therapist. But then they wake up in the middle of the night to find her gone. So they're like, okay, so she hates me and she had a terrible time and she snuck out in the middle of the night. But then they leave their room and realize that the ship seems suspiciously empty. And it's also 
all these like corpse AI things are also missing from the ship. And then they find a bunch that are like broken and dismantled. So they start exploring through the ship. They want to know what's going on. And then this tentacled brain shows up and they're like, what in the world is that? And this brain hacks their mind. And it's just, it's a very interesting metaphor, I think, for like anxiety and mental health in general. And I thought it was a really cool, like cyberpunk horror book. And it's very short. It's just a novella. It's like, I think it's not even 200 pages. Yeah, it's like 190. Super interesting. I'm so glad that I got this book and that I had the chance to read it because I had never heard of this before and I haven't heard of this author, but she has a book coming in October and I'm very, very excited to read that now that I've read this one. And I'm just like really getting into horror and like sci-fi horror, so. The next prompt that I completed was to read a graphic novel or a comic book. And this graphic novel has been on my radar for a while because a friend of mine read it for a class, I believe. And I think it's either based off a video game or there's a video game based on this graphic novel. I cannot remember. And that's Crawl Space by Jesse Jacobs. This is just a really interesting book about like friendship and sometimes how like kids have this need to escape reality and like there's this other world and there's just so much gorgeous art throughout this book. I, I truly love this book for its art. The story was interesting as well but I think it was just the surrealist strange kind of like trippy art that was found throughout the book. It's like a lot of vibrant colors in this black and white comic. Like these kids lives are so black and white, but then they enter this new world and there's all kinds of color and shape. It's really cool. It's really weird. I'm glad that I had a chance to read it. Then the next prompt I read was to read a book about non-romantic love or like friendship, you know? And I listened to the audiobook for the subtweet by Vivek Sharaya, and I have thoughts. So I thought the writing style was fantastic, and I really want to read more of her work. I think she's a very talented writer. I think it's my own fault for picking up this book and not necessarily liking it because I don't like books that overly integrate like modern social media and like forms of communication like if there's a bunch of texting and a bunch of tweets and Instagram posts like I just don't care <laughs> I just don't find that that's an interesting way to tell a story but I did like Shrya's like approach to the story I did think it was interesting I just really didn't like the two characters that were focused on and like the message of the story. It was very interesting and it unfolded in an interesting way, but it's basically a bunch of subtweets and people talking shit about each other via social media and about like the miscommunication of communicating through social media. So it's like a really interesting concept it is just not a style of book that I necessarily like. So like, I just wasn't a fan, but I do want to read more of Shariah's work. I know that she has a bunch of novels and nonfiction out there. So I'm looking forward to reading more of her words. And now last and probably least is a book that you read because of the cover. I really like this cover because of the 70s style of art and I really liked that it's kind of a strange, almost vulgar cover and I thought it was a good cover of what the premise of the book is. And that's Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder. So this book is a classic example of love the idea, didn't like the execution. I really like the themes of this book and the criticisms of society's 
pressures on mothers and dismissal of the work that mothers put into being moms and like the allegory of a mom like being so pushed to her limits that she turns into a wolf. I just thought it was really repetitive. And I don't want to say too much because I'm reading this for a special video coming out April 2nd. So if you want to hear more of my thoughts, stay tuned for that video. I just, this was a flop for me. I'm, I'm just like not a hot girl, I guess, because all the hot girl books are just like not my cup of tea. <laughs> Anyway, that's it. That's all for my Shake Up Your Shelves update. I will continue to update you throughout the year. I don't know how frequently, probably just when I am at a loss for short-term video ideas <laughs> because that's basically where we're at right now. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you've read so far for Shake Up Your Shelves. If you don't know what Shake Up Your Shelves is, I'll link mine and Sally's videos below in the description, as well as the link to the story graph. And hopefully everyone participates, has a good time. And yeah, like this video if you like this video, subscribe if you wanna see more of my content and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.